Hey, I, the big bad wolf, have yet another Disney-related vlog to speak about here. You've surely heard the news about Sony Pictures Home Entertainment striking a deal with the Walt Disney Company to take over distributing their physical media in North America, i.e. DVDs and Blu-rays. This doesn't mean their physical media is going away here, but it does mark the end of an era with the dismantling of Buena Vista Home Video, whom it first started up in 1980 as Walt Disney Telecommunications a non-theatrical company before adopting the Buena Vista name in 1987. But Walt Disney Home Entertainment started up in 1978, releasing some episodes of The Wonderful World of Disney on Laserdisc through MCA's short-lived DiscoVision line. It wasn't until 1980's founding of Disney's telecommunications and non-theatrical company they finally began releasing videotapes. And this is when the format war was going on, VHS versus Betamax. This was conceived by then-CEO Disney, Ron Miller, who largely wasn't that great, despite being Walt's son-in-law. He was pretty similar to Bob Iger, but let's not go on about him again. In addition to purchasing the tapes for a hefty price, you could also rent them from Photomat. Were those too young to remember, Photomat was a drive through photo developing service back when people took pictures on film cameras. And they also offered movie rentals and video cassette. Hmm. Disney birds are always singing like that, as you know. <laughs> yeah. Even though the tapes still use that Neon Mickey opening logo, the tape cases and labels and such had Sorcerer Mickey on them. Talk about misleading. An animated logo based on that would not debut until fall of 1986, by which time they were beginning to phase out that packaging style, still mostly using it on their live action titles at the time. The original Walt Disney owned video titles, as you may have seen in that Walt Disney and You promo, were mostly of live action movies, including a bunch of obscure ones, many of which are now indeed available on Disney Plus, along with some cartoon short compilations. They were initially hesitant to release their famed animated features on video, feeling back then they should be a special event exclusive to movie theaters on a 7 to 10 year reissue cycle. Several sources say Walt Disney felt that should be the case, but I heard that old Walt did eventually want families to be able to re-enjoy his animated classics in the comfort of their own homes, but just not on regular broadcast television. Dumbo and Alice in Wonderland were the exceptions, the former because it was one of Walt's all-time favorites he worked on, and the latter because it didn't do so well to box up this at first, and so Walt didn't think fondly of it. They also released the Free Caballeros and the Many Ventures of Winnie the Pooh on video in 1982, the former because it was from when they were doing the package features to save money during and after World War II, and the latter because it was a compilation of three previously released featurettes at New Linking Animation. But as home video grew in popularity during the 80s, numerous distributors began releasing more animated content on video cassette. Even recent animated TV shows at the time, like He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. So in 1983, Walt Disney Home Video took advantage of that by launching the Cartoon Classics line, featuring themed compilations of their classic cartoon shorts, many of them making their home video debut that way. Even my Oscar-winning Silly Symphony debut, the Three Little Pigs got released on one of those videos. It was so successful, they followed up with the limited gold edition line, featuring some of their more special animated titles. 1984 was also when there was a change in management at Disney. Ron Miller was out, and now Frank Wells, Jeffrey Katzenberg, and Michael Eisner were running the company. They pointed out that animated features were not making anything just sitting in the vault for that 7 to 10 year cycle. Well, they figured they should put them out on video, but give them the same moratorium treatment as the theatrical reissues. And thus began the Walt Disney Classics Collection, the line everyone remembers with the Black Diamond logo. As I've already mentioned a few times before, Robin Hood was the first such title in the Classics Collection. 
And as it was a less risky experimental release, since its only theatrical reissue in 1982 didn't make a lot of money, critics weren't fond of it, those reviews were rare cases, and it wasn't that popular except with children, but it ended up doing pretty well on video, and I'm pretty sure this also had a part to play in shaping the furry fandom in the 1980s. Now that people could rent or buy this movie on video cassette or even laserdisc and enjoy it in their homes time and again. Other titles soon followed, and they had their first real big hit in the classic line with Pinocchio, being one of the top video titles in 1985. The following year, Walt Disney Own Video introduced their sing along line of videos, another big hit for them. Also, Regarding the classics, things really changed in 1990 when The Little Mermaid came to home video in the classics collection after its initial theatrical run, becoming the best-selling video title in 1990. And don't be fooled by the eBay auctions. This title is in no way rare or banned. That er uh, thing on the castle was completely unintentional. Since the freelance artist drawing most of the Little Mermaid promotional art at the time had to rush late in the night to complete this and was only half paying attention. But yeah, with this, Disney started releasing their newest anime features to video after their initial theatrical runs to great success. As more and more classics were top sellers from Disney, they also came out with more home video series for kids and families, such as the second wave of the Walt Disney Cartoon Classics. The Walt Disney Mini Classics line for releasing their anime featurettes, including the Winnie the Pooh ones, along with releasing their popular animated TV shows like DuckTales, The New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, and Tailspin on video. But then 1994 brought some major changes to Walt Disney on video. The Cartoon Classics second wave was discontinued, the Walt Disney Mini Classics series was replaced with the Disney's favorite story slime. One of the titles in that included a video with the first three silly symphonies I starred in. After all, The Three Little Pigs is a classic fairy tale. Additionally, the sing-along songs line got a makeover. The regular New Adventures of Winnie the Pooh videotapes were discontinued and were replaced with the Winnie the Pooh Learning and Playtime and Friendship collections, along with the Storybook Classics line to replace the Winnie the Pooh Mini Classics type. And then the Black Diamond Classics collection was replaced with the Walt Disney Masterpiece collection as part of releasing Snow White and the Seven Dwarves it's long-awaited home video debut, something that will been, happen 30 years ago coming this fall. Now this and several other titles, like The Lion King and Pocahontas and such, are indeed deserving of the brand name. But I wouldn't necessarily call The Black Cauldron or Oliver and Company or Hercules masterpieces, as it is a pretty arguable word, even for Disney. The Masterpiece Collection lasted until 1999, after which he began releasing the animated features on DVD. First as Bare Bones limited issue releases, and then through the Gold Classic Collection, then the Platinum Editions, up to the contemporary Blu-ray releases and the Diamond and Signature Collections. It's worth mentioning how in the mid-2000s, Disney's DVDs started coming with that fast play mode. It's become a popular meme subject, since the announcer states that your movie and a selection of bonus features will begin automatically. But does it say that you first have to watch a bunch of previews before the movie actually starts? Just like with the VHS tapes. They were designed for those still new to DVD technology and unfamiliar with how their menus work. Oh, and with the signature collection of Blu-rays, Disney phased out the whole moratorium practice as part of it in anticipation for developing the Disney Plus streaming service. As 35 years after beginning the Classics Collection, the whole Disney Vault thing was getting old hat and kind of annoying consumers everywhere. As far back as the 1990s, where it could expect to pay a lot of money for a new old stock vault of Disney title. Or even one in good playable condition. Psst. Come here. Wanna hook a little mermaid? <laughs> One of Winnipeg's home video's most requested titles not marked for almost four years. But here's a little secret, pal. 
early old Sebastian could be part of your world. It's an official genuine clamshell package, Black Diamond Disney Classic. Not some bootleg Betamax or crummy camcorder copy. Interested? That's not all, chum. You don't need a fairy godmother to find Cinderella. Pull some strings, you can even get Pinocchio. And phasing out the Disney Vault thing especially makes sense since theatrical re-releases of those movies are now extremely sparse. As they began doing that moratorium thing with the Walt Disney Classics line so they wouldn't diminish the chances of re-releasing them to theaters. As it could be a special experience to see them on the big screen. Pinocchio's final theatrical reissue didn't go over very well in 1992. Due to several already owning it on video by that time even if it had been vaulted for like, like five years by then. And a similar reissue of Sleepy Beauty was all planned, but also canceled for that reason. But that didn't stop The Little Mermaid from a fairly successful theatrical re-release in 1997, largely to compete with Don Bluth's Anastasia, which Disney now ironically owns after buying out 20th Century Fox five years ago. Next up, Buena Vista Home Video also had a few other lines aside from the Disney one. In 1983, they had the Muppet Home Video brand, predating Disney buying the Muppets for 21 years. That line included the 70s Tales from Muppet Land TV specials and a Fraggle Rock song compilation. Then from 1993 to 1996, Buena Vista Home Video revived the brand as Jim Henson Video. This included the own video releases of The Muppet Christmas Carol and Muppet Treasure Island, reissues of the earlier TV specials, the first two theatrical Muppet movies, sing-along titles, Fraggle Rock and Muppet Babies releases, even a direct-to-video movie, Muppet Classic Theater, something that was never reissued on DVD or streaming. When the Walt Disney Company started up Touchstone Pictures in 1984 for their more mature films, they had a home video division to go with it. And that was also where Who Framed Roger Rabbit and The Nightmare Before Christmas made their home video debuts. In the 1990s, Buena Vista Home Video also released titles under the regular Buena Vista name, such as documentaries of concerts, Alvin and the Chipmunks videos, anime dubbed into English, even Rocky and Bullwinkle episode compilations. Yet the whole video boom continued into the 1990s with this classic J. Ward series making its video debut at that point. Also in the 1990s, Win of this own video released productions from Deke Entertainment under the Deke Two Time Video brand, especially since the Walt Disney Company owned Deke for a while. The Buena Vista home video name was still used into the late 2000s for distributing Studio Ghibli movies on home video in North America. But now, like I said, it's really the end of an era. Instead of starting their own home video distribution arm again, all the future Walt Disney home video releases will be distributed through Sony Pictures Home Entertainment. The discs will still carry the Disney name and logos, but they'll probably also have a Sony credit on the packaging. Physical media is definitely no longer as prevalent as it used to be. Warner Brothers, Discovery, and NBC Universal also share own video distribution for their studio's respective releases, Studio Distribution Services. This did allow stuff like a DVD or Blu-ray set of all the Rankin Bass Christmas specials, especially since Universal owns the pre-1974 Rankin Bass material from Classic Media, and Warner Brothers owns the 1974-87 Rankin Bass library. But that's only kind of similar to my point. Also, as part of this whole thing, the Walt Disney Company is discontinuing the Disney Movie Club. This isn't that good, since they had some exclusive titles through that line. Even a goofy movie got a much-needed upgrade as a Disney Movie Club exclusive Blu-ray release in 2019. The DVD available on the general market before that... It came out in June 2000 under the Gold Classic Collection. It was pretty much just the original 1995 VHS ported to disc. 
complete with pan and scan transfer. It was so old, even some modern players would have difficulties trying to play the disc. The Blu-ray here marked the first home video release of the Goofy Movie in high definition, and it was also the first time the widescreen version had been available since in North America since the 1995 Laserdisc. And that same print is on Disney Plus, not surprisingly. Sure, streaming is great and all, it can be very convenient, but I'm still a firm believer in physical media. In addition to DVDs and Blu-rays and even VHS video cassettes, we've also got music on CDs and on records and compact cassettes. What do you expect? I'm an old tune. I'll say come in handy if the landline or internet services are down. Last summer, Zach wanted to watch a Goofy movie one day with someone he knows very well. But they couldn't use Disney Plus since the landline services were down. So they will enjoy the movie by popping this in their Blu-ray player. Plus, if there's no electricity, or you're in something like a trailer or whatever, and you have the means to play DVD via battery power, like those older portable DVD players or even a laptop computer with a built-in optical disk drive, you could watch the discs that way. Of course, I don't think there are any laptops left on the market with built-in disk drives, but there are nice external options. But I guess that wraps up this vlog. Buena Vista Home Video may be going away, but its legacy will still live on, the way this YouTube channel is, which you should stay tuned to as always.